So, in episode two of Ikebukuro Westgate, we get introduced to a man named Kyochi Ozaki. This man is the leader of his own organization named the Red Angels. And one day in the city of Ikebukuro, known as the G Boys' hometown, and Takashi being the leader of the G Boys, he one day hopped on a stage and started dancing in front of a crowd and had attracted his own form of admirers who happened to want to be a part of him and his work, let alone the group that he decided to be in charge of. The episode starts off with a boy named Mitsuki who happens to be in a hallway being watched by Makoto as more of a stakeout, basically the employee that works for the company OT Holdings who are also the owners of OK Curry, which is a fast food restaurant and more of all you can eat buffet. Do not treat the employees of the right standards. They employ young students and pay them very below average wages and also overwork their staff to the point of mental fatigue as well as physical fatigue, which is not good for an individual. To be honest, if they do not decide to actually abide by the rules of the company as a form of warning, for not being considerate for them actually hiring them and actually giving them a place of work they get beat up but why would anyone be so happy to work for a company that treats their employees so badly they get beaten up they are fatigued they get paid way less than they should be and they just cannot to the point where even some have even decided to commit suicide for working for such a horrible company some people cannot cope with the stress and so they try to kill themselves committing suicide because they cannot get out of the contract that they are scared to breach and some people have also wanted to file lawsuits but never get far enough to do so because they are attacked by a gang with a hidden face apparently has no connection to the company people are scared and so makoto which includes takashi as well as kiyochi ozaki who is also the owner and the leader of the red angels decide to investigate and through their investigation they come to find out that it's this major corporation that has taken between the two gangs each individual scummy members that couldn't join back or join a new within the gang and use these guys to cause the trouble around the city instilling fear in people and making the rest of the ikubukuro city attempt to fight each other because as we all know g boys own the majority of the city but now due to due to kiyochi ozaki being involved and creating his gang the red angels are also owners of the city too now don't get it twisted during the episode towards the ending of the episode okay it wasn't a thing where they all shook hands and it all parted and they were all saying hooray or they did all watch kiyochi do his little break dancing ballet dancing on the stadium and they called it a night do you know what i'm saying but there was some tension between certain members within each gang that did not like the fact that they have to coexist for now like i've said i believe in the first episode they seems to be a gang other than Takashi, and i believe this is going to be a problem because what happens when two gangs enter a city or, or try to take each other's turfs a problem ensues and so that is what i believe that's going to be the gist of ikubukuro city basically who is going to fight for the city and who is really going to be the king of ikubukuro now if it wasn't for masaru san who happened to be a high school friend and a long long time friend of mitsuki and also being a past previous gang member associated with the g boys i don't think this situation would have been handled in the t in the right type of way to be honest i believe masura san probably would have fell victim to the kind of evil works of the ot holdings which they had prepared for each breach of their contract with an employee and i feel as though masura san would have just been another statistic within within the civilization who also have their own side of the story with how treatment really is within a company nowadays even in the real world when people talk about the stuff that goes on within a company or even at work it's hard to believe them because i wouldn't say it's necessarily hard but they hardly get any form of belief unless they are female okay i'm just gonna put that out there but two you know just as a male they don't they put the stereotype that this cannot happen to people at work you know but it really does happen to both genders and it's really nice to see that real life events is what i'm trying to say within this anime 
can also be related to the things that happen within real life you know such as suicide suicide was very edgy to me you know it wasn't like it was a fantasy anime do you get what i'm saying like i felt kind of weird watching someone jump off freaking building bro like it was very very intense and i appreciate ibikura westgate for this type of anime series i like that it's down to earth and literally i can get a grasp of it and if it wasn't for stories like this i don't think in the world of i don't think certain people will look at situations like that and try and compare it to their real life situation if it's going on for them now i don't want to track off too much and talk about real life and anime i just wanted to make a quick comparison within the story but i gotta say ibukura Westgate is definitely an anime that isn't so so fantasy and so unrealistic me that you're impressed by the colors and the flashing lights and the powers going on they really hit deep with the real stuff and those kind of stuff are needed in anime series i don't get a lot of those so i appreciate ibukura Westgate for that if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and subscribe especially if you're new man but if you're watching or listening to this in the morning afternoon or evening hope you guys enjoy your day man it's been your boy roos with mr 36 and i'm out peace <laughs>